Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Today we're going to get a little work done on our 2018 Ford Explorer. If you don't know what Ford Explorer I'm talking about, link's up there. Let's get started. So now we've got to get it clamped up to the frame rack. So we use the frame rack to lift it up and we'll set it down on the stands. Then we let the frame rack down so we can put our clamps on. This is one style of frame rack. Other ones you drive on and lift the car up on the rack. So now in order to get our pinch weld clamps on, we have to remove the rocker covers. And to remove the rocker covers, we gotta pull the wheel opening moldings off, or at least the bottom portion. This wheel opening molding we're gonna have to change, so I'll take the whole thing off. One hidden clip inside there. And if you pull the molding out away from the bottom, the retainers stay in the body and the molding just unclips from it. Then to get the retainers out, you just twist them 90 degrees and they pop out. Sometimes they come out, but most of the time they stay in there. So now I'll do the same thing on the passenger side. Only one clip stayed in that time. So now we can put our clamps on. slide them about to where they go then we'll lift it up and measure them out. They do have specific points where they clamp on. I just raise the lift up. Slides over the pinch welds. I mean, clamp it down on all the pinch welds. When we're all done and we remove these clamps, we'll have to repair the areas where the clamps were. It does mess up the paint, we don't want it to rust, so we'll paint those little portions later. Now we're going to put the gauges on so we know where to pull it. It's kind of like a ladder. It's got a tape measure inside it to tell where the measuring points go front to rear. The attachments we'll put on later, we'll measure up and down and side to side. And we can put our ram on. Now we'll give it a little pull. It looks much worse than it actually is. Most of what bent was actually just the reinforcement. A little bit at the end of the frame rail. These frame rails are high strength steel, so they can't be repaired. I did figure on putting a new one in anyway, so no loss. A little stress relieving, getting our apron back to where it should be. It ripped a couple of the welds out when I pushed it over. It didn't kink anywhere, so it was still within tolerance to be straightened. So here's where the build became a dream. I figured on changing this frame rail because they're high strength steel and can't be straightened. They have to be replaced in a complete unit. To replace each rail is 36 hours. That does not include the time to remove the engine, transmission, subframe, and dashboard. That time is additional. So you can see why these things get totaled. Those marks right there where I'm hammering, that's where the adjuster thought that that was a buckle. It's actually an indent that a lot of vehicles have where the tires turn. Either they were just looking for a reason to total this vehicle, or they were just inexperienced and thought that was a buckle and this frame rail was no good. 
you do see a lot of people try to section them, but that is against proper repair procedure. Ooh, something shiny. Let's remove it. Just like anybody else, I get distracted. This nameplate has to come off eventually, and I just felt like doing it now. So, we're going to clean it off. Use our little magic eraser. And a little wax and grease remover to get the glue off. It's like it never happened. Sorry, Sunset. I'm not advertising for you. So now we can remove the bumper reinforcement. This bolt down here is for the distance sensor. It's very expensive. And we're going to have to buy one. Now we're going to unbolt the other side of our reinforcement, but it doesn't come off. Because Ford didn't trust their bolts, so they welded it on. Or maybe they didn't trust their welds, so they bolted it on. Either way, we got welds to take out. So this side, we'll just grind them out. I don't know why I didn't grind them out of the other side. I win. So we get to use our favorite tool. Put a couple of bolts back in there. I didn't want it falling down on me. In the pile. So now we can take this bracket off. It's pretty mangled up at the end there. So I'm going to take it off and replace it. Unfortunately, I didn't bother to look to see how much that bracket cost. Turns out that bracket that should be about 50 bucks maybe at the most isn't even available. The only way you can get it is to buy the entire frame rail and apron assembly for $600. So I have a $600 bracket. Unless I can find some other method, maybe a used one, we'll see. But even knowing that it was 600 bucks and not the cheap $50 bracket, I still wouldn't have saved it. It's pretty mangled up and torn. In the pile. So these frame rails are only slightly repairable. This one's okay because we're in front of the crumple zones. And if you can straighten it without heating it or without tearing it and welding it, you're good. It actually straightened out pretty nice. It was just the bottom that was buckled up from that bracket. So we pound it back down, square it back up, and we can weld our bracket back on. Disconnect the washer hoses. Disconnect the plugs to the washer bottle. And try to remove it. So this car has 9,000 miles and it's two years old. You'd expect the bolts to come out, right? No. Of course not. They're rusted in already. Really, Ford? An 11? So it started going and work it back and forth. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe not. Thanks, Ford. At least the other ones came out. We can always drill that one out later. So now we can pull the air box off, get it out of our way. We're gonna pull the radiator support out. Disconnect the wiring harness that goes across the radiator support. 
with the worst clips possible. They always break. Now I'll have to take the gauges out of the way. Disconnect the AC lines. I have to get the hood cable out. So to get to it, we gotta pull the horns and the hood latch. Now we gotta get to the trans cooler lines. Pull back the little spring clamps. Pry these hoses off. They did not like to come off. They're on there pretty good. So now you pull the radiator hoses off. Both the upper and lower radiator hose are right next to each other. So that was kind of nice, Ford. Can to unbolt the top of our radiator support. And get it out of the way. So here's the behind the scenes that you guys don't normally see in my videos. And that's making a list of all the parts I'm going to need. Since I'm not a YouTuber that rebuilds cars, I'm a rebuilder that happens to make videos. My profit comes from the vehicles themselves, which means I can't just go out buying the first parts to come along. I need to be careful on how much I'm spending on these rebuild projects. So I want to find the best prices. I make a list of everything I need and start some searching. New is usually the quickest way but the most expensive. But since we're dealing with a Ford, used parts are actually very difficult to come by. And the reason for that is, for this vehicle in particular, there are 30 different headlights, six different grills, six different radiator supports, five different bumpers, and a host of small parts that are only vehicle specific. So to find parts in salvage yards that match your description aren't that easy. Even though I only need a couple of headlights and bumper pieces, it can get pretty costly. That distance sensor I was talking about before is $1,400 list price. Each headlight, $1,400 list. The grill, $700. All the pieces that make up the bumper are roughly about $3,000. So you can see where this build would get out of control really quick if I don't find some good prices. That's where this part comes into play. So now with the radiator support out of the way, we're back to our rail end. We put the porta power underneath it to act kind of like a dolly. And we'll just hammer it flat. We'll get it ready for that new piece. Even if I have to buy a $600 frame rail to get it. Timber. Now we can take out that last little bit of it. We can drill these welds all the way through because our piece will be the backing. We'll weld it up from the outside. Take that out of there so we don't have a rattle later. We'll clean up what's left of the welds so we're ready for our new piece when we get it. Grind both sides of the welds so we don't have any contaminants. Now we're going to unbolt the rest of the radiator support. It was broken. This bracket's a little bent, so we're going to have to straighten it out. Reposition the ram.
There's a convenient little hole in there. We'll just run a bolt through it. It doesn't take much. Probably could have done this with a slide hammer, but I took the time to put it on the frame rack. We're going to use it. There wasn't much to do on the frame rack. I basically put it up here just so I could use the measuring system. I could have pulled all this on the floor. It wasn't much. The reinforcement took most of it and made it look pretty bad. So we'll pull this bracket forward a little bit. Hammer over the edges that were folded over. That looks like it's supposed to. So now everything's ready for the new parts to come along. So that's as far as we can go on our exploder for this week. Next week, hopefully I'll have some parts and we can continue on with this build. If not, we'll find something else to do. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see whatever I have coming up next or the rest of this if I can find some parts at decent prices. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.